Before we start this video, a large thank you to Joshua, Poja, Michael, Josh, Peter, and I don't even know what language these characters are from, so if somebody could enlighten me in the comments, that would be great. But thank you nonetheless for your support, man. I neglected to mention last names this time because I would absolutely butcher the pronunciation, but thank you guys so much for your support. I greatly appreciate it. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Okay guys, we're gonna fix some bugs in this video, and this one's pretty funny. Um, <laughs> the AI just continually runs around the player, and this is actually a very simple fix and something I kinda just had a typo on in the code. Some of you may have already fixed it, but essentially we're calling uh, the wrong transform.rotation because we've placed the states on an empty game object under the enemy, and we're actually trying to edit those transforms instead of the actual enemy manager transform that the model's on. So let's fix that, and let's also just jump in here to the uh, pursue target state and change uh, a few things as well. So, see here is transform.rotation. This would actually just change the transform of the pursue target state game object, not the enemy manager, which is what controls the rotation of everything, including the model uh, underneath in the hierarchy. So we save that. We actually have to do that in a couple places um, because it's across a few of the states I made this mistake. We're also going to um, do a couple more things as well and just make this a bit neater. So I'm going to go up here and in enemy manager dot is performing action. We're going to say enemy animator manager dot anim dot set float. And we're going to set the vertical to zero. So basically if you are uh, performing some kind of action, we're going to stop all movement on the pursue target state as well. I'm gonna make that by time not delta time, and then we're gonna say we're just gonna say return this. Okay, cool. So next over on the enemy manager, let's get rid of viewable angle, and let's get rid of distance from target. Now we're not actually deleting these variables; we're just stopping them from being cached on the enemy manager script. We're just gonna call them every frame on the individual states. So uh, here where it says enemy manager distance from target, we're just gonna say Float distance from target is equal to vector three dot distance enemy manager dot transform enemy manager dot current target dot transform dot position enemy manager dot transform dot position. And whoops, that is supposed to be a float, not a vector three. There we go. Okay, so down here we can just get rid of enemy manager and just keep just the distance from target. And we're going to do the same with viewable angle. We actually don't even need to write viewable angle because we've already typed up here. So let's just erase that. Excellent. And down here we can erase this and just say float. And then the same thing down here, just erase enemy manager. I'm just doing this to keep the enemy manager clean and less cluttered. Uh, we can call these variables on the individual states anyway because there's only ever one state running at a time, so it won't cause any extra memory hoggage. Okay, so let's minimize that. So now we have a few bugs to fix on the other states too. Uh, again, just the same one here where it says distance from target. We're just gonna say float distance from target is equal to, and then we're gonna get rid of the enemy manager here like so, and the enemy manager here as well. Okay, on the pursue target state, we're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna say float. And then you see here how it says transform.position. We need to say enemy manager.transform.position. Otherwise, it would have took the transform.position of the empty game object that the state script is on. Again, that's not what we want. We do the same thing right here as well. This is what was causing the weird behavior with the uh, enemy running around in circles around the player. So let's erase the enemy manager and say distance from target. Now let's check the code. Ah, another one right here. See, it says viewable angle. We need to say enemy manager dot transform dot forward. There we go. So anywhere that just says transform dot rotation or dot forward or dot whatever, we should put enemy manager dot transform. Um, that's where we wanna handle the rotation and movement from. Okay, so let's save that. Let's erase this for the viewable angle again. Let's say float. This is on the uh, this is on the ambush state script. Okay, that looks good. Now, if we go into game and run over past our enemy here, 
Excellent. He no longer runs around in circles. Now he'll actually chase us and rotate with us the proper way. And he's following us. Cool. All right. So this next bug, as you can see, every time our enemy walks at us or swings at us, he's actually pushing our model. We don't want that. Uh, we want to make it so when we're attacking or running against this uh, character, we're not being pushed at all. So we're going to do that, and uh, there's a neat way to do it. It's pretty simple, actually, so let's get started. So under our enemy uh, game object here, we're going to right-click and create an empty game object. We're going to call this Combat Colliders. We'll use this in the future uh, for backstabbing purposes and parrying as well. And then under the Combat Colliders empty game object, we're going to make another empty game object, and I'm going to call this uh, Character Collision Blocker or Character Collider Blocker, whatever you want to call it, but the purpose of it will be to stop us from pushing each other as players or enemies. So you can add a component here now, and I'm gonna add a rigid body. And then I'm also going to add a capsule collider, but let's actually see where the enemy is so we can see it now and get an idea where I'm putting it. Uh, capsule collider, and then I'm going to edit this a little bit. So I'll make the height, uh, let's say about two. And then I'm gonna make the Y about 1.2. Actually one is fine, I believe. Yeah, that looks good. Uh, radius 0 0.5 or 0 0.4 maybe yep looks good now the rigid body uh, has to be not using gravity and is kinematic uh, that's very important okay now we need to actually make a new layer so let's do that let's add a layer i'm going to call it character uh, collider blocker or collision blocker whatever you prefer you can name it whatever you want honestly i'm just going to name it that going back on our character collider blocker we're going to make that layer exactly what it is now we're going to do uh something here in project settings so go down to project settings and then go to the physics section. Okay, and down here you'll see the check boxes. Uh, on the character collider blocker, uncheck everything except for character and character collision blocker. And then close it. And now we're gonna do the exact same thing on our player. So we're gonna right click, uh, create an empty game object, call it combat colliders, which we'll be used in a future video for backstabbing and parrying again. Uh, create a new empty game object. We're going to call that character collider blocker. Okay, and now we're just going to add a rigid body again like before. So I'm going to add a capsule collider. I'm actually going to go to my enemy now. I'm going to copy the capsule collider components because you want to have them around the same size if they're humanoid enemies. And uh, I'm going to paste the values and I'm going to make sure my rigid body gravity is off and it is kinematic. And then again, I'm going to set something here under the character um, thing in the physics and project settings we're going to uncheck character collisions you see that box there so character should not collide with character now if my player's tag or layer is set to character as you can see the enemy is not able to push us any longer so right now i believe if we set our enemy's layer to character we'll get some funky behavior because i think we use that layer to determine how we find potential targets to attack and the enemy will probably try to attack itself or something but all you can do for that is just make another layer um, and call it enemy and just do the same thing okay this next bug happens after we get attacked what you'll see is our enemy will actually attack us but then after he's done attacking he'll be running forward in place and it looks kind of silly so even if he's around you he'll still be moving and this is a very, very easy fix. Uh, this happens because when we return to the pursue target state, or rather the combat stand state, we're actually not resetting um, our movements. So all we gotta do in the combat stand state is if enemy manager dot is performing action, then all you have to say is enemy animator manager dot anim dot set float vertical, and then make it zero. That's it. So now, after you attack and return to the combat stand state, if you are in a period of cooldown, you will not move. Save that and jump back in game. And as you can see, the enemy attacks us, and it does not keep running afterwards. Okay, cool. Alright guys, if you enjoyed the video, please do not forget to drop a like. It genuinely does help my series get around. And if you're feeling super generous, leave a comment to appease the YouTube algorithm gods. And if you're feeling like a total champion, check out my Patreon below. I will see you guys in the next video. And by the way, we just hit a new Patreon goal. So that means I'm going to be uploading twice the content right now. That's pretty great. So I'll be starting that after the new year. Thank you guys so much for helping me hit that goal. I really appreciate it. As usual, I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya!